Viz breaking is a mild form of thermal cracking, a process that was developed in the late 1930s. Viz breaking stands for viscosity breaking or viscosity reduction. The process is used to uh, reduce the viscosity of residue to produce fuel oil that meets um, the desired specifications. Viz breaking conditions range from um, about 460 to 500 degrees Celsius. The uh, residence time in the uh, furnace is very short and it is the short residence time that brings to whiz breaking the concept of being a mild thermal cracking process. In the variant that is normally uh, termed the soaker whiz breaking process, the uh, Majority of conversion occurs in a soaker vessel that uh, is shown here, in which the uh, two phase effluent from the uh, furnace is uh, held at an elevated temperature for a predetermined length of time to allow the cracking to occur before being quenched. The oil is then passed to a fractionator. The uh, focus of uh, my presentation is to examine the configuration and the design of the soaker vessel. For background to the viz breaking process, see the papers of Spate and Joshi. If uh, the uh, soaker vessel is just an empty vessel, the two phase uh, mixture that enters the uh, soaker vessel will uh, lead to uh, a hydrodynamic regime that is uh, observed in uh, bubble columns that operate in the churn turbulent regime and this uh, will cause a severe back mixing of the liquid phase. Such back mixing is uh, generally undesirable because it leads to a wide residence time distribution and consequently to over cracking. And one possibility to uh, reduce or avoid over cracking is to introduce staging of the liquid phase in the soaker. And uh, in the paper by Joshi, from which uh, this uh, figure has been um, taken. We uh, show a uh, configuration of a soaker vessel in which uh, soaker internals are introduced in the form of uh, perforated plates that serve to reduce the back mixing in the liquid phase. For further details, cons consult this paper. If uh, one examines the uh, patent literature on the internals for uh, the soaker vessel, a wide variety of uh, hardware configurations have been um, suggested in the literature. This is uh, summarized in the uh, figure eight of the paper by Joshi. We have uh, a donut type of construction for the internals here, where uh, 
we have essentially co-current upflow of um, vapor and liquid. We could have uh, another construction in which uh, we have uh, perforations on the, on the plate that are asymmetrical. For example, this area is, has perforated, this area is perforated, but these areas are not perforated, allowing um, a circuitous path for the uh, vapor liquid streams. Or we could uh, have uh, perforated plates everywhere with co-current upflow of uh, liquid and vapor. We could have a, a donut construction with perforations allowing for flow in this direction. So this is a variant of this donut vessel. There are other variants in which we could have uh, perforations um, um, of uh, two with two different hole diameters. This, is this configuration. In this configuration, the gas. Uh, a vapor, cracked vapor, is uh, drawn off from the sides. In this configuration, we have countercurrent flow of uh, liquid and vapor with uh, vapor draw off from the sides. In this case, we have countercurrent flow of uh, vapor and liquid with uh, a central tube in which uh, the gas is withdrawn. In this configuration, the two-phase mixture is introduced into a horizontal vessel that is baffled. The liquid flow is uh, horizontal, whereas the uh, cracked vapors are withdrawn uh, from the liquid in a cross-current manner. The question arises, which configuration is the best one to use in, um, in a commercial soca vessel? Let's uh, draw up a wish list for the uh, configuration of the soca vessel. We need to uh, have uh, adequate amount of the liquid phase residence time and the uh, degree of back mixing in the liquid phase should be suppressed such so that uh, the residence time distribution is narrow and uh, over cracking is prevented. Concomitantly I would suggest that the vapor residence time should be short because the vapor already contains the uh, cracked products and uh, we do not wish to over crack the vapor. So vapor staging is uh, neither required nor is it desirable. Now uh, in the vis breaking process there is a tendency for coke to deposit on the uh, walls of the vessel and the internals such as perforated plates are susceptible to clogging. Therefore for ease of maintenance and cleaning there should be no nooks and crannies in the soaker. We should avoid baffles and obstructions in order to prevent coke deposits and clogging. Um, I'm setting up this wish list in a manner that has been suggested in the past in uh, the paper by myself with my uh, colleague C. This paper is termed Strategies for Multiphase Reactor Selection. 
that uh, summarizes how one goes about selecting the right reactor configuration for any process task. In uh, my analysis of the uh, SOCA internals and SOCA configurations, the wish list that was set up in the previous slide can be uh, met entirely by having a SOCA configuration in which the uh, two-phase mixture consisting of vapor, colored yellow, liquid, colored in blue, is introduced into a horizontal, unbaffled vessel. By making the uh, horizontal vessel long enough, subsequent uh, and um, maintaining the uh, height of the vessel to be uh, short, in other words, we uh, use a shallow horizontal vessel, this would automatically introduce staging into the liquid phase because uh, one well mixed stage would correspond to a to a uh, to a uh, section of the column in which uh, the uh, the length is equal to the height so if the h height to length ratio is 1 we would have a uh, well mixed vessel so in this case we would have one mild mixed vessel here, one mild mixed vessel here, one mild mixed vessel here. So three, this is fourth, fifth, sixth. So in this uh, drawing, we would already have uh, six well mixed stages, which would correspond nearly to plug flow of the liquid phase. The uh, vapor residence time is maintained uh, and held short because the uh, height of the vessel is uh, low and we have a sh and uh, therefore the residence time of the vapor is uh, is restricted and uh, this allows or prevents overcracking of the vapor so the vapor is withdrawn cross current to the liquid flow we don't need any baffles and uh, the introduction of baffles would lead to clogging and coke deposition that are all undesirable. This uh, configuration follows from applying the uh, reactor selection strategy that uh, I suggested along with my colleague C several years ago. In this paper, An uh, analogous process for thermal cracking of shale oil was analyzed and I will uh, demonstrate in the uh, subsequent three slides that the analysis of the thermal cracking of shale oil is precisely analogous to thermal cracking in the soaker with breaker process. So let's consider shale oil cracking as an analog of the whiz breaking process. The uh, recovery of uh, oil from shale is essentially a thermal cracking process. The kerogen, that is the precursor for the uh, oil, when subject to heat, produces bitumen. Further heating of the bitumen reduces, uh, results in an oil vapor, and uh, coke gets deposited on the uh, shale. Also, if uh, further heated, the uh, oil may overcrack to produce uh, light gases. So, um, a shale oil process, which is also called shale oil retorting, consists of a, uh, a reactor whose configuration is yet to be determined in which uh, we uh, um, in which we introduce heat 
by uh, mixing the uh, the oil shale with hot combusted shale that is obtained by um, burning off the coke that is present in the shale in a um, in a uh, combustion uh, reactor could be a fluidized bed and that uh, combusted shale has uh, sufficient heat to provide the energy required for oil shale retorting. The, uh, the vapor products contain oil plus uh, some light gases. The details are in my uh, 1994 paper. If one examines the uh, patent literature on uh, the various configurations for shale oil retorting, we see a wide variation in uh, the choice of particle sizes and contacting flow patterns. The particle size could be large, say about 50 millimeters, and the contacting could take place in packed moving beds, where, this, for example, the uh, solids can be moved downwards and the gas removed uh, from the top. Or we could use a screw pump in which the solid is pushed upwards with the gas flowing downwards. Or the solids could be placed on a uh, conveyor belt in which uh, we have a cross current flow of uh, gas and solid. We could imagine particles of uh, 5 to 10 millimeters in a uh, rotary kiln device in which uh, we have a co-current flow of gas and uh, solid or in a uh, screw conveyor in which we have co-current flow of gas and solid inside the uh, conveyor. If the particle sizes are smaller than three millimeters, we could imagine a fluid bed construction or configuration in which uh, we have vernic solids with uh, upflow of gas, or we could have uh, a stage fluidized beds in which uh, we have uh, perforated uh, plates placed for redistribution of the gas, allowing for multi-stage fluidized bed operations. Which of these configurations is the optimal one for shale oil retorting? And the answer we arrived at after a careful analysis is uh, discussed in the uh, following slide. After a careful uh, examination of uh, the available uh, technologies for shale oil retorting, the uh, ideal configuration we arrived at when I was working for the uh, Shell Research uh, Laboratory in Amsterdam in the uh, early 80s was a fluid bed shale retorting process in which raw shale is introduced into a series of uh, compartments, of uh, the, the, each of which is fluidized, and particles of less than about three millimeters are used. The required heat for the shale oil retorting is accomplished by recycling the hot combusted shale particles and uh, putting them into each of these compartments. The movement of the solids is horizontal and the vapor is removed from each compartment cross current to the flow of the uh, shell particles. For fluidization purposes, we have a uh, Stripping gas, that could be part of the uh, gaseous uh, fraction leaving um, the vessels. So we have fluidized bed 
cross current contacting of uh, shale particles and oil vapor indeed if we examine this concept this is precisely analogous to my uh, soca configuration that i suggested a few slides earlier the uh, two takeaways from this uh, presentation are summarized on the slide the soca configurations that are currently used in commercial practice that uh, they usually consist of uh, a long vertical vessel with the horizontal um, perforated plates to uh, introduce staging into the liquid phase this configuration does not appear to me to be uh, even remotely what is required for the uh, this breaking process if we examine the wish list of all the desirable features of the uh, wish breaking soaker process we would conclude that ideally we should use a shallow horizontal vessel no baffles are necessary with cross current withdrawal of the cracked vapor products if we uh, if the horizontal vessel is long enough sufficient staging of the uh, liquid phase is achieved now um, the configuration i've suggested is uh, just on my uh, personal analysis of the soca is breaking up process if uh, anyone is interested they could uh, take this idea further to uh, commercialization 